Hi there, my name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations and I have just bought a Macintosh 2 SI. This is one of my favourite Macs. It's an interesting one because it came out in 1990. It was originally designed to be a 25 MHz 68030 computer. But at the time, the Macintosh 2CI, which came out a year before, was a 25 MHz 68030 computer, and they did not want these two computers competing with each other. And so what they did is they changed this into a 20 MHz 68030 computer, even though it was originally designed to be 25 MHz. It's the only computer that has come out um, by Apple in this particular case design. Um, it came out the same time as the Macintosh LC, which is the little pizza box shape. And this is basically just like a double height LC or a double height pizza box. Um, they are plagued with capacitor issues and battery leak issues. Now I bought this one on eBay described as untested. And anyone who's been ever bought any uh, computers off eBay uh, will know that the term untested usually means broken. Now, I don't mind if this doesn't work because most 2SIs, if they haven't had their power supplies recapped, they won't work. The power supplies um, are absolutely notorious for failure. I've actually already got a recapped power supply that I could just plonk straight into it. Well, they, are also, they also have uh, capacitor leakage on the logic board. So I would not expect this to work and I'm not even going to attempt to do that before I recap it. However, the real problem that these have are leaky batteries, uh, exploded Maxell batteries inside. So this is now going to be a little voyage of discovery to find out exactly what this looks like inside. Have I bought a rusted lump or have I bought something that I can restore into a working computer? So first thing we'll do is we'll open the case up. And we just do that with these two tabs here, trying carefully not to break the plastic because all of the computers of this vintage have very brittle plastic. So, case comes off. And, oh, to my joy, I can actually see in here is a little Maxell battery in one piece not spilling, spewing its funk out all over onto the board. So I'm really, really pleased to see that. Um, what I can also see is, I've got here, these little knobs here, you can undo those. There's one. Come on, there we go. It's a bit bent, unfortunately, but I'm sure I'll be able to bend that back into shape. Okay, there's, there's two little knobs there, and this allows me to remove this here. Um, because this was a, uh, you know, sort of a shorter shape, a smaller box, um, if you wanted to have a new bus card, if you were to put a new bus slot in here like that, the new bus card would be too high, because new bus cards are actually quite high. So what they did is they created a separate little, like, daughter card, which allows you to run a single new bus card horizontally. So um, I have undone this and I am going to then remove this, hopefully without breaking it. There we go, out it comes. So what we have here is this card is uh, not only does this allow you to change this, you know, change this po processor direct slot into a new bus slot, which is coming out sideways like that. It's also got on it here a 68882 FPU. So there's no FPU on the board itself. It's on this little daughter card, a processor direct slot card. I actually have another card uh, that I will probably use in place of this, which is a network card, but it also has a 68882. So it takes away my ability to connect up a new bus card, but it does give me uh, network accessibility, which I really want for this. So yeah, that's that there. And we've got a card that was just floating around in here. And by the looks of it, that is a network card. So that's a new bus network card. Um, I've got 10 base T there and the, uh, 
the other one that I can't remember the name of. So, okay, well, that was nice. Uh, it's an Asante, Asante uh, Mac Con for new bus revision C2. So that's a really nice surprise to get that. I'm extremely happy with that. Um, what I can also see is it's loaded up with RAM. Yeah, uh, I think they are two megabyte SIMs. Um, I'll need to double check that, but they look like two megabyte SIMs, but I could be wrong. I mean, I might be lucky, they might be bigger. Um, we'll have to wait and see when I fire it up. But anyhow, four RAM SIMs, so that's, again, that's a really nice little bonus to have that. I'm gonna whip those out. Uh, thankfully, um, the uh, RAM slots on this uh, have the little metal prongs rather than those terrible plastic ones that snap on the older computers. So um, that's a fantastic thing. So here's our RAM. Uh, I'm going to ditch the battery now because I'm sure it won't have a charge in it, but it hasn't exploded. So that's an extremely lucky day. Um, so then um, we've obviously got a hard drive here. I've got a, that's a quantum, uh, oh, let's try it that way around. <laughs> quantum 80 megabyte SCSI hard drive. Um, our original one by the looks of it. And this is the fun bit because I want to try and get this out without breaking any plastic. I'm really quite amazed how uh, neat and tidy this is. So there's a the hard drive. We've got our floppy drive there. Uh, it's probably stuffed as well. It'll probably need cleaning and it'll probably need a new eject cog. I've actually got one all ready to go for that, so that's quite good. Um, we've got our little speaker here and there are these little contacts and they actually make contact with the underside of the board. So when the board is in position, it makes contact with these, which are for the light and for the speaker. Um, so there's, I'm just gonna whip out the floppy drive while I'm at it. Oh, there we go. It's the floppy drive out. And then we have our power supply. Now, there is usually a screw just here that holds that power supply in uh, in place, but it has been removed, um, which is fine. Makes it easier to get this power supply out. And then this just neat. Yeah, there's a little plastic tab here. It's got to pull that out, and a little button here. Yeah, come on, fella. There we go. Okay. Maybe I should have done the other end first. There we go. Okay. He wants to come out. Got another button here. Maybe I should take out the fan first. Uh, I'll tell you what I will do. I'll grab a screwdriver. So that I can just press in this. There we go. Now she'll come out. All right. So there's a the power supply. And if you have a look, there's some rust here. Um, on the side of that, that's from uh, some obviously leaky capacitors inside. Uh, this may or may not be salvageable uh, in terms of, you know, if, with recapping, we'll see. I'll open it up and have a look. But I'm not overly concerned because I do actually have another one of these all recapped, all tested and working, all ready to go. So now we've just got the fan and the board. And the fan just comes out by squeezing it in the sides and then uh, lifting it up like that. So there's the fan and it has these little contacts here which make contact with those there. So the board is pretty much ready to come out. And once again, this is another one of these where there's this terrible fear that you're gonna break plastic because it's held in by these little tabs here and here and they have to be bent outwards in order to release the board and allow it to move forward. And what we're wanting to do is bend those without breaking them. There's that one. There's that one. And out she comes. 
So, there's the board. As I say, there's the little speaker with his little contacts there. And here is the logic board. And we can see that it's got all of these electrolytic, surface mount electrolytic capacitors, and they will all be leaking. Now I could see some funk going on around here, but to be honest, the board looks in pretty good condition in comparison to some I've seen. One thing worth mentioning is this here, which looks like it might be a VRAM slot or something like that, is actually a slot for a ROM SIM. Uh, some versions of this came out with the neat, with an actual a ROM SIM, more like you know an SE or something like that. Um, but you can tell, based on looking at the board, they're ROM chips there, those two. If you have a board and those two chips are there, you don't need a ROM SIM. If those two chips aren't there, you do need a ROM SIM, and then you would have a jumper on this little, these two little pins here, what's this, this W1. Now at W1, you would put a jumper on there, and then you would have your ROM SIM in there. Um, now, a really important thing about this board is that it has these four crystal oscillators, and they provide speeds for different things on the board. This one here provides the speed for the CPU. There it is there, the 20 megahertz 68030 CPU. Um, what I am going to do to this board, I'm actually going to demonstrate the process of overclocking it. Because this was designed around a 25 megahertz architecture rather than 20 megahertz, you can overclock this computer to 25 megahertz without any real sort of issues with the board. I mean, yes, you end up running a 20 megahertz CPU at 25 megahertz, but um, there are other people that have done this mod, and I have done this mod, and there don't seem to be any issues. I guess I actually have some faster CPUs. I could swap them over, um, but I'll probably only do that if I cook this one by accident. So, um, so I'm gonna recap this. I'm not gonna film that because I've got plenty of videos about recapping. We've all seen it before. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to show the process of overclocking this from a 20 megahertz to a 25 megahertz, so it's a little bit more on par with the performance of a 2CI. Now this is the inside of the power supply that came with this, uh, uh, this 2SI. Uh, now the big issue with these power supplies is first of all that they have a lot of capacitor leakage, uh, and it's a double whammy type situation. Not only do you have uh, some leaky radial capacitors here, so these ones here all need to be replaced. You've also got this little sort of daughter card here, um, which has two surface mount electrolytic capacitors on it, and they leak as well. And if we actually flip this over, you can see, I don't know if you can quite catch the, the shininess, but there's a uh, there's definite um, leakage on this board and there's some corrosion just here as well. So, uh, um, so this is, uh, you can actually, there you go, there's some gunk um, there from that, uh, that leaky capacitor. So um, the, uh, these uh, power supplies, I, I would be amazed if there was still an original one working without it being recapped. Uh, and if it is, my recommendation would be to get it recapped as quick as possible because uh, they are a ticking time bomb. I know I say it all the time, but if you've got a computer like this, of this vintage, and you haven't had it recapped, get it done. Um, because if it does still work, it's a miracle. So I have uh, cleaned and recapped the 2SI logic board, and it now looks like this. Uh, so I have connected it up to my uh, recapped power supply. Um, and a, uh, a monitor, and we're just going to check and see that it works. Uh, there won't be any chime because uh, um, the speaker is in the case, and as you can see, this is not currently in the case. Um, so, uh, okay, well, that's, that's quite good. We've got, yep, we've got a screen. Yep, cursor's moving, that's fantastic. I don't have any hard drive connected to it at the moment, so I'm obviously going to get a flashing question mark, but that in itself is great. Um, I know that this works because as I say, it was purchased as untested. So this is the first time I've actually switched it on and I'm very pleased to see that it works. 
so the next step will be to look at the uh, overclocking of the uh, of the CPU. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to connect it all up. I'm going to uh, run a speedometer on it so that I can get a uh, baseline speed test of how it is at as 20 megahertz, and then I can run another test afterwards at 25 megahertz and compare the two. Okay, so here are the speedometer test results running at the CPU standard speed of 20 megahertz. On the left hand side is the Macintosh 2SI, on the right we're using the 2CI as a comparison. Um, if you have a look at, say, for example, the CPU, it's 0.27 for the 2SI, it's 0.4 for the 2CI. Uh, one, the baseline, is a Quadra 605 or LC475. So obviously you expect these to be under one because these are all 030 uh, and the uh, 605 is an 040 chip. Uh, don't worry about the fact that the FPU is empty for the 2SI as I ran this uh, speed test without the, um, the FPU plugged in. So uh, as you can see across the board the 2CI is faster than the 2SI in all of these tests. So before I start this overclocking, a quick disclaimer, I accept no responsibility if you follow these steps then you damage your computer, you do this at your own risk. Um, so just a few things here quickly. Um, here is the CPU, this is a 20 megahertz uh, 68030 Motorola CPU. Now if I take this, if I remove it and I replace it, say for example I've got here a up, up, up. I've got here a 33 megahertz one, if I swap those over right now um, it will still only be running at 20 megahertz and the reason for that is the speed is not actually set by this CPU, that's basically telling you what the what the limit of this CPU is but the speed is actually set by one of these crystal oscillators here. Crystals basically vibrate at a very accurate frequency and they work essentially like a little clock um, and this one here is a 40 megahertz oscillator uh, and it is exactly twice the speed of this CPU so it's a 20 megahertz CPU that is a 40 megahertz crystal oscillator. Now if I was to remove that oscillator and replace it with a uh, 20 for example megahertz this computer is now only going to run at 10 megahertz so you know basically whatever the crystal is halve it and that's the speed that this computer will run at. So what I am planning to do is I'm planning to replace this 40 megahertz crystal with a 50 megahertz crystal. So obviously half of 50 is 25. What will end up happening is it will um, make the CPU run at 25 megahertz. Now of course the issue is that we have a 20 megahertz CPU that we're now going to be pushing to 25 megahertz which is outside the spec of this CPU. Now that does bring some potential risks on um, the risk that this CPU might overheat, uh, or that it might fail. Um, however it has been done, this mod has been done and um, as long as you don't push it too hard, some people have actually put in a 55 megahertz um, a crystal oscillator which takes it up to 27 and a half megahertz um, and there haven't been any uh, issues that I have heard of by doing this mod. Now of course if I really wanted to go at it I could remove the CPU and put in a faster CPU so that I, I, I knew that I wouldn't be pushing it beyond its limit but uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you have some you know a fair bit of surface mount soldering experience and a microscope because soldering a, uh, a, a chip like this is, is quite the task. Um, so all we are basically going to be doing today um, in a nutshell is taking out that crystal there and replacing it with a faster one. So what I have here is a 50 megahertz crystal oscillator which I bought on eBay. Uh, I bought I think five of them for like six US dollars something like that. Um, it is referred to as a DIP14 crystal oscillator and as I say 50 megahertz you shouldn't have any trouble finding them they're readily available. So this is basically the same shape and size as this one, it's just a different frequency. Now another thing I should really mention is that 
the 2SI is a little bit different to some other computers. You might think, oh, this is great. I can go around modifying all of my computers to do the same. Not all of the computers ha are set up with the same architecture. Um, some computers, what they do is they use a single crystal to drive the speed of the entire board. And so what ends up happening is if you put a faster one in, you can end up creating a, a big failure because there are lots of things that should all be running at a particular speed and they're all now running too fast. The 2SI has a dedicated crystal for the CPU. So when I've changed this and put in a different crystal, the only thing it's going to be affecting is the CPU, nothing else on this board. And that's one of the reasons why the 2SI can have this done to it. So that's basically it for the, um, for the theory behind it. Now we just have to go with the practical. All right, so here we have our four pins um, at each corner of the uh, screen here. And what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to remove all the solder so that I can get those out. Now, what I typically do when I'm removing solder, I do a few things. I usually add a little bit of new solder because this is lead-free solder, has a lower melting point usually makes it a little bit easier to uh, remove it and then I'm going to get some solder wick here and I'm going to try and suck up as much of that solder as I can okay that's worked out really well I can see right through there let's move on to the next one I warn you not all of them are that easy okay there we go, and then let's get this up here. I want to try and do this without damaging the uh, the hole or the uh, the crystal, just in case I ever decide to put it back. Now I didn't get all of it out there, but as long as I can get it all out from most of them, um, it should be fairly easy. Okay, there we go, just trim off my wick here, and once again we'll pop that there, yeah that's another good one. There we go, okay, and last one, <coughs> and some solder. So we've got two easy ones and two hard ones. Okay, come on, you can do it. It's quite stubborn, isn't it? I might try and uh, put this down the hole. A bit better okay so i'm going to now apply some heat and i'm going to push it down that was <laughs> went a little bit harsher than i would have liked but it did go down and then uh, this is the other one which i couldn't get all the solder out from so i'm going to apply some heat to this come on The other option, of course, is to use a solder sucker, um, but I haven't had a whole lot of success. I'm going to add some more solder to this, and we'll give the sucker a whirl. Um, I will prime my solder sucker, I will put some heat there, and I will suck. There we go. That actually worked really well. Okay, so I think now if I flip the board over... Let's jump back to this camera. If I flip the board over, I should be able to pull it out. So there's my 40 megahertz crystal oscillator taken off. And then here is my new 50. And I am going to pop this in. Uh, these all 
have a, uh, a little dot on them and the dot goes on the lower right. Uh, you can't see because all the inks come off these but you just have to take my word for it that in each instance the uh, dot is on the lower right there and there and there and there. So with this one we have a dot There we go, got a dot there, and that's, that's it. So, there you can see, it says on the board 40.0000, but now this one is 50.000. All right, so now we've got to solder this in. Um, and for that, we need to flip the board over, give a couple of these pins a bit of a bend just to stop it from falling out. And then solder onto this one, onto this one, this one, and this one. This one I made a little bit of a mess of, unfortunately. I'm not, not overly thrilled with myself for that. And uh, now I'll get my trusty toothpaste, toothbrush doused in uh, isopropyl alcohol and give it all a good scrub clean. And get, I might get a little Q-tip here and just give that a bit of a rub. Just want to try and get as clean as possible. Okay. All right, so now I just need to trim these pins a little bit. They're a little bit on the long side. And that, in theory, is that. Uh, this should basically now be an overclocked 2SI. So the next thing, I'm going to go plug this in and we'll do a quick little speed test and see how it runs. So here are the speedometer results from the overclocked 2SI. The 2SI results are on the left, the 2CI results are on the right. Uh, and as you can see, the 2SI, even though it's been overclocked to 25 megahertz, is still not as quick as the 2CI. But it is definitely quicker than the 20 megahertz version of the 2SI. So that all went well. If you watch this video and decide that you want to overclock your own 2SI, leave a message in the comments and let me know how it all went. Thank you for watching.